Hi everyone and welcome to Cambridge Photography Week On Demand. Delighted to be chatting about how you turn your photography passion into a business. And I've got Martin Possel with me today to talk about just that. And uh, yeah, Martin started out doing it as a bit of a, a side hustle, side project, and it's become a bit more than that. So let's get on with the chat. How you doing, Martin? Hi, morning, Chris. I'm well. Good stuff. Thanks for joining. Um, and uh, let's 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 just let's crack on. Let's uh, start off with you telling a bit of, a bit about yourself. Um, well, I actually got into photography a very long time ago, back in the mid seventies. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> um, back when I worked in what was now the Babraham Institute, um, and our lab had a dark room next to it for um, for processing electron microscope plates, but nobody used it in the evening. So I got into developing and printing my own black and white images so that was how the, the, the hobby started um, but my career has really always been in life sciences so I've worked in and for biotech pharma companies for over 40 years and when I sort of retired sort of I still wanted to keep going to the um, the conferences that I'd always gone to because they were fun and it was nice to stay up to speed with what was happening so I convinced um, one of the conference organizers that they should continue to invite me along as the event photographer. So this, this sort of side hustle as photography for healthcare and biotech, which at the time was just going to be for covering life science events. But then that kind of took off to other life science events, corporate headshots, and then you'd get the, oh, and by the way, my son's getting married. Do you do weddings? Or... Oh, my grandchild's being okay, baptized. Yeah. Do you do baptisms? And so that grew and then that grew. And so what was a retirement hobby has now become more of a full-time business. Still, the bulk of my, my income comes from life science clients. Um, but okay. the, the, the non-life science income is starting to grow as well. I don't advertise. It's all word of mouth. Um, but that's, I th that's great. So if, if, if I have a happy... A happy bride and groom, they will usually say, well, actually, our friend's getting married. I really like the work you did for us. Could you do it for them? And it's fun. Lovely. So so that's something that's great you're getting all by referral. And um, do you find do you find that um, you're getting more work in a certain area, like the life sciences or or wedding photography? Is there, have you got a feel for the balance of Work well, there's, there's, I mean, there's quite an overlap. So if my my sort of pure consulting clients would then say, oh, by the way, you do photography. Can you do our corporate website? Oh, and then they okay. would say, and we know someone that's getting married, baptized, whatever. Um, so mm -hmm. in fact, the last wedding I did was two biotech companies affected. Well, not biotech companies merging, but two people from two life science companies that I knew getting married, which was nice. Okay. Um, and that's led to another referral for some that happens to work for another life science company. But yeah, Brilliant. but it's fun. It, it's it, the kind of photography I do, I'd say, is um, it's not the traditional, oh, well, now I'm going to pose all the bride's family together type stuff. It's um, it's more trying to caption human interaction, which the event photography does as well. It's all about, um, as, as somebody told me, you're not paid to take photographs. You're paid to capture emotions. And that's what it's all about. It's it's sort of 100%. trying to capture the the interaction between people at a wedding or a, or a or an event over drinks. It's usually fun. I suppose people are more at, more relaxed, more at ease, yeah. rather than you going right pose now. And, we're going to and take also, shots. because um, a lot of the people that, that hire me know me from another contact, there's a, there's um, um, there's less formality. Particularly in the okay. life science events, um, I'm relatively well known in the industry. So, if some, if some, it, it's natural to come and chat to me over drinks at the networking reception, and if I can kind of sneak a few photographs out of that, um, that's great. That's really nice, actually, because then you are you're not an addendum to the event; you're in it. Yeah, you know, you're very much immersed in it, which which in itself will owes itself to more natural photography anyway, doesn't it? Yeah. And I, I think my, uh, I, I'd say to anybody that was trying to do the kind of thing that I'm doing is if you have a contact and it might be through an industry, it might be through a club, 
then then lean on that because that's something that that your competitors may not have. I think it would be very difficult yeah. to say, right, I'm not going to be a wedding photographer. Oh, how do I do that? When you haven't got a an in or um, or a track record or or a lump of referrals. Yeah. Let's should we go let's go 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 back to the kind of the beginning of your like first when you were getting into it. So what was your what was your first job? My first job when you when you were doing yeah, first job for, for your business, you know, when you were setting up, what was the first photography, you know, gig that you were given basically? Um, it was the One Nucleus Genesis Conference in London uh, in, I think, 2018. Okay. So One Nucleus, which is this, the Life Science Membership Association for, um, for East Anglia and London, um, run two big conferences a year, one in London in December and one in Cambridge in July. So for the, ever since 2018, I've been covering both of those conferences for them. So that's, that's been my way in. And people then can see what I produce because uh, although I'm producing um, images for the conference organizers who mainly use them to advertise the next conference, I'll also produce a slideshow of the Im images, which I'll put on YouTube or wherever. So then people who are at the yeah, conference nice. find it great fun to look at that. Oh, there's me. Oh God, I was yeah, drinking nice. a lot, wasn't I? Or oh, whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So did you, so how did you, how did you feel when you were that was kind of your first you know semi-retirement you know you know paid paid job how did you feel doing that with i get a sense maybe there was because you knew the people there was you felt more at ease of doing that as your kind of first proper paid job yeah, completely um and the the brief that i was given from the organizers was was basically they wanted me to photograph and it was it was a fairly it was a fairly mechanical brief in a way to photograph all the trade stands mm. to make sure i had at least one good image of each one of the speakers but then i said well actually what you what you really want as well is the networking event because it shows people interacting it shows people enjoying being at the conference and putting my old marketing hat on if i was going to market the conference and i was going to use images from the year before then i'd want to show people interacting being connected with the speakers and enjoying being there so that's kind of yeah it. i'm pretty confident in my in my technical ability as a photographer um and so uh, i was hoping i would be lucky in in capturing the interactions and i was and you know it's kind of a joke you know, the, the more you practice the luckier you get and so the more i've done it the yeah. more i can i can see what's about to happen and capture that interaction that the fact that i know that these two people are friends and i can see them walking towards each other over coffee i know that there's going to be a joke or something is going to happen yeah you're actually what you would talk about is kind of reminds me of conversations i've had with say so duncan james who's uh he does he photographs the mod scene um, mm -hmm. and he takes that approach of being very kind of natural within it as opposed to things yeah. being staged and also yeah. mark box who does humans of cambridge mm -hmm. you know he's he has to see people on their lunch break. You know, he's got to be very careful about how he approaches people and he tries to make it as natural as possible. So that kind of spark in that rapport is like is really important from, from, from the beginning, isn't it? Um, yeah. The thing I do um, for, for whether it's an event or a wedding or whatever, it, it, this whole blending in kind of thing is find out what the dress code is, you know, dress appropriately so that people don't see you as a... I, I, I went to a wedding recently where the photographer was there in his black emblemed T-shirt. And so it's obvious he's the photographer and everybody was a bit wary of him. Whereas when I go in, I tend to be, if it's a, if they're wearing a suit, I'll wear a suit. And I've done one wedding where afterwards the, the, the guest said, I didn't know you had a photographer. And I thought was, that was oh, great brilliant. because they were just completely natural. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? Because yeah. people are very wary of the lens, aren't they? Yeah. And um, yeah, if, and you're literally part of the event, which means you can document it more, you know, yeah. in, in, in the best way. Things that um, that I don't usually do um, as a uh, for, for covering weddings is produce the wedding album. Okay, so they okay. get all the they get all the images they want, but then I'll produce a slideshow, and the feedback that I've had is that actually more people want to watch the slideshow then actually dig out an album and go through it the other thing about the slideshow is if you if you have it on dropbox then you can send the link to your relatives that weren't there so i'll just i'll just show you um i'll show you a bit of a slideshow from um 
uh, a recent wedding, if, if you don't mind. And then I'll also show you a bit of a slideshow from, from one of the conferences. Um, so the, the first one is a, uh, is a wedding one, um, which was quite fun. It was at the Cambridge Registry Office. And then afterwards, because both of the people getting married uh, were, um, were postgrads at Gongle and Keys College, they had permission for us to, do, okay. to shoot some images at, at Keys, which was great fun. Uh, yeah, which we that's did. nice. Uh, then uh, another one I'm going to show you is the on is, is a slideshow from the On Helix conference, which was in July this year. Okay. So you can get a feel for how the mix of the brief having to photograph the um, the speakers, but with the speakers being animated, then fits in with people networking and having fun over coffee and drinks. There's a few other things that, that I've got there which um, are probably not so relevant. One I'm covering soon is the Cambridge Rare Disease Network's biannual conference at the Kingston Genome Campus. Now, that's not a paid okay. gig. I don't charge charities for work. And um, it's a yeah, the nice. CRDN is a charity I, I like very much, so I'm looking forward to doing that again. Yeah. Let's kind of wrap up and like talk about... What advice would you give? We touched on some of it already, but what kind of advice would you give someone who's, you know, may, maybe they are approaching retirement or they're, they've got a job and they're thinking, you know what, I wouldn't mind making something a bit more of, of, of my hobby that is photography. Yeah. Lean on, lean on the contacts that you've made through your career. Like I said, it, it might be that you've, mm -hmm. you've been doing a particular sport. Um, and the great thing about even if you're not a even if you're not a sports photographer, if you understand that sport, I'll give you an example of this in a minute. If you understand that sport, then you already have an advantage over somebody that that's just technically good. And the example I'll give is one of the organisers from from um, One Nucleus, who knows me as a photographer as well as a life science person. Her side gig mm. is she's the coach of the Cambridge University women's gymnastics team. And she oh, saw brilliant. it okay, on yeah. my CV that, that 40 years ago, and probably about two and a half stone ago, I was in the Cambridge University <laughs> men's gymnastics team. So she asked oh, me wow, if okay. I would cover yeah. the varsity match, the, the gymnastics varsity match. And that was great. Because I understand gymnastics, I knew what was going to happen. I knew exactly how to capture people in midair doing somersaults and breakfast. So I, I understood the routines. And I was able to get images that I don't think if you didn't understand the sport, you would be able to get that. Then that led to something else. We, we published a slideshow of that. And then I got contacted by a local trampoline club saying, I've seen the way you've captured you know, midair um, sports. Can you come and do the marketing material for our trampoline club? Yeah. But so be lean on the contacts you've got and be sociable, network, go chat to people, be friendly. It's very true, actually. And I think so, you know, sometimes people think if they built the website, you know, of their business, for their business, and the kind of the job is done. <laughs> That's only the beginning, you know. And actually, yeah, I like, I like what you say about there's a bit of, of, kind of gravitating towards something that is familiar to you, mm -hmm. something you have knowledge of, but also people you know. Um, and that itself can help you build confidence and kind of find your own kind of business style, I suppose. And then, then naturally, you know, if people like your work, then then they'll yeah. refer it on to others. You'll have other people contacting you. Being a technically good photographer is, isn't enough. It, it's, it's, you, you've got to be a technically good photographer, but it isn't enough because there's a lot of technically good photographers out there. You need something else that's then going to, to develop your, your, um, your, your client stream. And what's next for the business? Well, carry on as I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy what I do, uh, which is great. Um, I, I don't want to get busier. Um, it's it's already generating um, more than enough income to pay for all the all the photography kit that I want. That's and I know, and I actually can't think of a lens I need. Mm. Shock. We we won't tell Owen that. <laughs> Maybe pop into the shop. I would I would help you decide. Yeah, help me out with that one, yeah. Well, that's you know that's interesting actually because I think you when you know people are talking about setting up businesses or run businesses. I think a lot of the kind of mainstream conversation and certainly ones that tend to get the biggest voices are, you know, you need to have a, a solid plan. You need to know exactly where you're going to be in the next few years. Mm -hmm. But there's, I think that's someone that's put, puts too much pressure on people from actually starting. Yeah. I think I like your idea about, you know, 
picking up that camera from a professional perspective, you know, and going, would you like, I can do something for you. And then taking it kind of project by project. And then, mm. as you say, you know, it's kind of become more than you thought it would be. Um, and I quite like the way that, you know, you know, you're continue to do the projects, you know, do, do the, the pay gigs and the charity gigs as well. Mm. And see what comes, see what yep. comes from that. Great. Well, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate it. Well, I look forward to the event as well. If anyone's interested in um, coming along uh, to the Cambridge Photography Show, the tickets are still available. Um, and yeah, we'll see you all on Saturday. Thanks very Great. much, Martin. Thank you. Bye.